Hello and welcome to this quick review or overview of the, the CineStill TCS 1000 temperature control system. This thing's been out for a while but I recently picked one up just to have a go at sort of simplifying, maybe kind of making my colour development a little bit lazier. Um, if you're familiar with this, you might also be familiar with Jobo systems, which are kind of home development temperature control systems. Essentially, it's a heating element that sits in a vat of water and uh, they go for a lot of money, even used, they're, they're hundreds of pounds. This one is around the hundred pound mark, so not a cheap piece of kit by any means, but also it's um, hopefully gonna <laughs> make a marked difference on the simplicity of my C41 process. I've got three rolls of films to develop today. Just in the interest of keeping this video short and snappy, I've actually pre, um, sort of, uh, spooled them onto this tank and you might be able to see in the backgrounds I've got my three um, Dev Blix Stab development chemistry sets ready to go. Right I've got my uh, water tank loaded and I'm ready to go with the system. Just to point out it goes into a normal wall outlet but it does need an adapter if you're based in the UK. Um, I'm going to chuck this in the wall, turn it on and let's see what we get. Okay, it's just beeped. Let me uh, give you guys a good shot straight of the screen. So, on it goes. Oh. Is there a button somewhere that I need to press? Looks good. And it says, I just clip them back on the tank. 23.2 degrees, uh, 3 minutes 30, 8 minutes, I think that is dev and flix. And at the top you can see the set temperature is 39. Now the development chart I use actually shows development at 38 plus or minus half. But I think that accounts for the fact that the thermostat is kind of within the thing and the rest of it might have cooled down a bit. That's flashing 23.1, I think it's time to start. So, um, so let me get my bottles in. Just quickly, you'll notice on the base of the TCS, there are these two um, ports here. If you can read the labeling, this one says max and this one says min. They only, uh, the system only works when the water level is between those two lines. So I've got to be careful. You can see I've accounted for the volume of things I'm going to add, but if I go over max, apparently it doesn't work. I'm not really going to find out today, but let's just start adding these. So I've got my stab, my dev and my Blix. Uh, in these glass bottles and it's also good practice to preheat the film so I'm going to do that as well. I'm just going to have to use uh, this watering can to kind of force down the plastic because those can float out and become quite annoying. Let me pan back up to the screen and you can see if I press here, ah, slide it off. Okay, you can see that took barely any time at all. I'm at 37.8 C now. I am gonna wait for it to get to 39, um, but obviously that is the, the thermostat within the actual TCS, and I do want that heat to permeate around. So I think that my sort of litmus test and what I'm gonna use as a kind of safe starting off point is when this bottle um, of stab actually feels warm to the touch. So right now, the, uh, the temperature said it's there, but this bottle's not quite warm enough yet. But you can see it's staying on 39. It's probably still gonna be circulating. I just dipped my finger in. The water does feel warm, but uh, there is a little bit of variety as you move around the tank. I'll leave that going for probably another sort of 15, 20 minutes. 
because having kind of even temperature is quite important to the process. Okay, the system's been running for around 15, 20 minutes now, and I can see just by placing my hands against the outside of the water tank that the temperature is getting up. The thermostat obviously is one thing, but I thought I'd put the system through its paces. I've actually got this handheld probe thermometer, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna test the temperature of the water in the tank, and then I'm gonna use it and just dip it into some of the bottles and see how it's doing after this amount of time. So if I start by just doing the water, oh, that's a rather unceremonious drop. But if you watch this dial, you can see already that's in the ballpark, 38 degrees, all going up 38.2, but pretty impressive given the accuracy I need is within uh, half a degree of 38. I've actually got my technical data sheet here. You can see that the uh, the it's this number, I mean, it's rather small on the screen, but I am aiming for 38. Um, okay, so the water's doing well, but let's try the actual chemistry because it's, it's all well for the water to be correct. Let's go, let's have a look at this bottle of Stab. If I open the lid. So obviously because the, the glass bottles are heated as like a secondary thing to the water itself, I am expecting this to be lower, but let's see after um, this amount of time, around 15 to 20 minutes, how accurate this is. So again, let's hold up the thermometer. Slowly going to put the probe down. 33, 34. Uh, it's going up slowly. Okay, so I think that the stab is around 35 degrees. Once that gets to 38, I'm happy to start. And obviously with the C41 process, once you get the film in the tank, it's actually quite quick. The, um, the the C41 actually kind of beats black and white once the chemistry starts being poured. But um, I do need a few more minutes. Bit of a drawback that you have to wait, but realistically, whenever you do the C41 process, you will be waiting for the correct temperature. I don't think this is particularly slow and it's definitely faster than my old technique which was to simply have the vat in the sink at a certain temperature. The way I used to do that was I used to shoot for sort of 45 degrees and then let it cool down past 39 and, and do the process as soon as it hit 39, sort of as quickly as possible. This is nice because I don't have to kind of babysit it. What I'm gonna do is, is head off, I'll come back in another 10 minutes and I'm assuming by then that all of my glass bottles are the right temperature. I don't think I can damage anything by leaving it for too long. The one thing I'm a bit concerned about is the film, but because it doesn't touch the edge of the tank, really I'm sort of heating the air inside and I'll be giving that a pre-rinse anyway. So yeah, don't leave it for sort of five hours. If for the, the energy waste, if nothing else, would be a bit over the top. But um, I'll be back. 10 minutes and I'll see what happens. It's still heating away. It's um, it's taking a long time. The water is perfectly heated, but the, the actual kind of chemicals inside the bottle taking a bit of time. I've given them a shake every now and again just to make sure it kind of circulates within the bottles, but that's fine. I'm sort of occupying myself whilst the, um, the, the sort of the temperature gets there. So it's not like I'm sat watching it. But uh, it's been about half an hour, so it's it's not, yeah, just be aware of that. I just thought I'd mention quickly, kind of like impressions of the actual kit itself. It does feel um, like a kind of good product. So you, you take it out and it, it instills some confidence. I haven't used this wheel, but it clicks up and down well. Um, I can change the temperature, but that's, uh, that's preset at 39. It also comes with this quirky little um, bottle holder. This is just a little 3D printed um, acrylic part that I think clips on the actual stem and just holds two bottles vertically. Now the bottles I use, these glass ones, they don't actually work with this, uh, this plastic thing. But if you use sort of repurposed plastic squeezy bottles, you can put them in that to make sure that they're held at the, the kind of correct angle. 
I don't to do with this. I think I might just leave it in the box that that exists and uh, <laughs> could, be a, could be a selling point for some people. Okay, I've come back again. I've just checked the temperature and uh, it's been about 45 minutes. The water or the liquid inside the chemical jars is actually now finally the correct temperature to develop. That is my, the, my main sort of um, issue with the workflow so far is there is quite a long time between turning them on and, uh, and having the chemistry ready. But if you've got something else to do, if you've got a good book, go and sort of watch something on YouTube. Um, you can just leave it to do its thing. It hasn't made any weird beeps. It's kind of just been doing this since starting. I'm going to use the timer that's built in. Although I have noticed that the bleach fix is actually four minutes. So I'll see how easy that is to adjust. Right, here you go. So I'm going to try and adjust this timer by pressing the CS. And it's given me adjustment for the first, adjustment for the second. Wow, okay, this is really simple. So is it... Okay, wow. <laughs> That is as about as intuitive as it gets. Okay. Wow. Now I know that it's that easy. I might actually add a little bit of time to my, my first step. I'm going to do a slight push. So I'm going to put this to 45. Okay. And that is now perfectly ready to go. Let's, uh, let's pour some chemistry to a tank. And here goes. So I'm going to leave him on and circulating. I'm just going to move him back a little bit so I've got some space to use my hands at the front. First things first, colour dev, and this is going to be 3 minutes and 45 seconds. So what I'm going to do is... straight in the tank. And I can actually put this back in just to kind of insulate the temperature whilst the development process is happening. It is unlikely to drop that far, but keeping it in, especially if you put, push your chemistry to uh, the end of its lifespan and you're doing 20 minute baths. That is a good idea. So chemicals in, and I press the CS. Oh, that hasn't worked. I think I hold it for two seconds. Four, five, okay, so it beeps four times, and on the fifth stroke, you can start agitation. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I'd already accounted for the pouring time, which means that the, the film is actually gonna be a little bit overcooked. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take the film out when the timer shows 15 seconds. This is a really convenient system though. Normally I've got one hand with the iPhone or it's sort of on the counter getting uh, splashed by, the, by the, the sink. So I like having it all on this monitor. Let's speed this bit up and uh, let's, yeah, let's cut to me with some developed film. Okay, development's done, moment of truth. Let's see how the rolls look. Ah, I can already see images. That's always a good sign. I actually leave the, the stabilizer on as the last bath. So these all look ready to go. Should I take one and hold it up to the camera? There we go. Here are some pictures ready to be scanned or ready to dry for two hours then be scanned. I feel I kind of got the the idea of this wrong. The the way I did it with the sort of bath and heating the well insulated glass uh, bottles wasn't the ideal way to test it. I also actually made the point that this isn't to be babysat. You're kind of meant to just let it go and leave it for a bit. And then I said that and then I did the opposite and I was there every five minutes sort of staring it around messing with the thermometer. Um, on reflection, the, the workflow, which is clearly superior, is to do as I did, get all the chemistry in a little vat, start the thing going, start the heating process, just set like a 45 minute timer on your phone and then come back to kind of evenly heated chemistry. The, the results, I mean, they were fine, they were kind of normal, so it, it's not like it kind of improves your film photography, it, it just makes that one temperature management thing kind of easier to do. The Jobo stuff is kind of comically overpriced and the alternative, or at least my previous alternative, was just looking at a thermometer and letting large amounts of water very slowly cool down. So it definitely beats that. There's a confidence in being able to know, I click kind of 39 uh, degrees, off it goes, and if I come back an hour, an hour and 10, it's gonna be 
um, perfectly heated and sort of that's there's a convenience in that there um, there isn't anything really to be said for the TCS when it comes to black and white I can't see myself using it um, maybe people that live in like Siberia could use it if the water comes out the tap at five degrees but when the sort of the 20 degree target is quite easily achievable without the TCS I, I wouldn't recommend getting that um, if I do E6 however uh, which I haven't done I might do at some point I would definitely be using the TCS for that another point is that although the um, TCS sort of it works great in the sense that you can put it in water and use that to heat through bottles you can also use the TCS as a direct chemical mixer I didn't do it because I don't really like the idea of getting blicks sort of mixed around in the TCS um, but you can just take a kind of a jug put the TCS down into it and use that to kind of I, I guess mix and heat your chemistry although <laughs> whether it needs that much mixing is up for debate but if you're someone who wants to shave time off the workflow, then if you directly do that, I guess cleaning off the, uh, the, the TCS itself between each chemical. Um, I know that getting a little bit of dev in your Blix isn't that bad, but getting even a small amount of Blix in your dev is fairly devastating to the dev. So you maybe don't want to do it uh, with fresh chemistry. If you're in a rush and you've already processed 15 rolls, you've only got a couple left, in the chemicals then um, maybe that's a thing that I'll give a give a go to but it is possible to do I think that um, it is worth the money and I think that it is sort of viewed as a as a convenience thing a very successful product um, you saw that clip with the Jobo and it's like sixteen hundred dollars for essentially the same thing I mean that plastic tub those glass bottles and the TCS essentially constitute a Jobo the, the agitation arm thing, I mean, who really needs that, let's be honest. So, yeah, TCS 1000, I give it a thumbs up. Maybe you guys are in the market for something that does that temperature stuff for you. Check it out, and I guess the usual sign-off. Thanks for watching, and see you next week.